Addendum. Retrieval Team Gamma reports that number 087 eluded capture for six hours. She dodged and sprinted away faster than anyone anticipated. Fortunately, the girl came forward, believing it to be an elaborate game for her upcoming birthday. This serves as a reminder of the candidate's special natures, and how one mistake could jeopardize the entire program. If insurgent sympathetic media discovered our project, they would discredit us with the very populations whose sympathies we are trying to retain. We've implemented new retrieval protocols. No more mistakes. Again, this is quite a quick entry into Halsey's journal, as it is an addendum, basically meaning an addition to her previous notes. In this, she references Candidate 087 being Kelly. Even at this young age, Kelly was exhibiting some of her superior genetics in regards to her speed and reaction time. She was able to sprint away from the Oni acquisition team and eluded them for six hours in what she interpreted as being an elaborate game of chase. Now, bearing in mind that she believed this to be an elaborate game for her upcoming birthday, that means that she was able to outpace a professional Oni acquisition team, fully grown adults and members of the Office of Naval Intelligence when she was five years old inbound on her sixth birthday. And there were ripples of effect that happened as a consequence of her being able to elude the Oni acquisition team for as long as she did, likely also informed by the inability to acquire number 095 Caleb when he had something close to a precognition about being abducted for the Spartan program and the realization of just how severe of a security breach it would be had a child actually been almost abducted by an Oni acquisition team but actually made it to safety, whom then would have informed their parents, who in turn would have informed the relevant authorities, and that would have spread through the media like a plague. See, in this situation, Halsey is making the Spartan program in order to avoid the consequences of the Carver findings, basically a situation in which uprising was nothing but an inevitability among the outer colonies, and the Spartan program was conceptualized as being one of the only surefire ways to quell the rebellion in its infancy and avert from untold levels of human suffering and destruction. The Spartan 2 program was conceptualized to be the scalpel to cut out the rebellion before it took hold and restore order to the outer colonies. If then, before the Spartan program was even off the ground, information made it around the outer colonies via the media that the Office of Naval Intelligence and by extension the United Earth Government were abducting children from the outer colonies for who knows what kind of black project at that time, that would be all that would be needed in order to fuel the fire of rebellion to complete overboil. The Carver findings would happen a damned sight sooner than anyone had predicted should that have been the case. The protocols that were put in place in order to avoid these situations happening in the future were exactly the protocols that John had to experience firsthand. In John's case, when he was abducted, he was in his bed, asleep. One would assume there was probably effort made to sedate or tranquilize the parents or just ensure that the parents didn't wake up as the Office of Naval Intelligence Acquisition Team entered their home address. And then effort would be made to sedate the child and remove the child from the home, replacing them with a flash clone so that when everyone woke up the following morning, there would be no perceived abduction. Unfortunately, in John's case, and possibly even some of the other children's, he woke up when the acquisition team entered his room and had to be restrained, gagged and then sedated. This change in protocols ensured that the abduction could happen in secrecy with no interference from outside parties and as secure as it was reasonable to be given the situation. Yes, this is extraordinarily dark. Having a child stolen from their bed and replaced by a flash clone with the entire family being likely sedated so that in the morning nobody knew any different except the fact that the now-replaced Flash clone bore no striking resemblance from a personality standpoint to their original child. And I completely understand in this situation why Halsey has been painted as being a war criminal, but you have to bear in mind, although Halsey proposed the idea 
of using children for the sakes of augmentation, it was the Office of Naval Intelligence that approved that course of action. It was the Office of Naval Intelligence that sent the acquisition teams. It was the Office of Naval Intelligence that kept this black project black for as long as it did, before revealing tenuous information regarding the specifics of the Spartan program in order to throw Dr. Halsey under the bus and frame her as being basically their full guy. This doesn't in any way, shape or form exonerate Dr. Halsey for her original proposition in using children for the sakes of the augmentation procedures to be successful, but it most definitely puts into perspective that it certainly didn't just lie on Halsey's shoulders on being the war criminal. It is as just as much the fault of the Office of Naval Intelligence and the Cinconi at the time, Margaret Parangoski, for the responsibilities of the abduction of children from their beds. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons and YouTube members Neek the Silent Cartographer, Siphonic Storm and Todd Morrison, my Tier Zero Transcendients, Brian, Sebastian, Darian, Red Sea, Stalk of the Realms, Falcon X003, Starlight, Alvin, Flaming Halo, Josh, Legions Lost, Kyle, Cat Erdekam, Schneidish, Leon, Ignizzle, Chris, Cooper, Prophet, and Devon, the holders of the mantle, my glorious reclaimers, my loyal Metarchs, and all the other patrons and YouTube members that have jumped aboard to support the channel. Much love to you guys, thanks so much for your support, it's keeping things happening and helping development of the channel and future awesomeness in a big way. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there or jumping on as a channel member. It means the world to me and affords you loads of great perks and bonuses while also helping work towards some awesome stuff in the near and distant future. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain.